Welcome back everyone to another Coach Blucker video. Today we're going to be looking at summoner spells. Now a lot of the times we take our summoner spells, especially if we're learning new champions or roles, we tend to just do whatever op.gg tells us or u.gg or blitz, whatever you decide to use as your source of information, we usually use that. And what happens because we use those sources, we don't really know why we're doing things. So my goal for you in this video is to help you understand why you're taking summoner spells and the best way to properly use them during your gameplay. Alright, so the first summoner spell that we have is Ghost. For 10 seconds, your champion can move through units and gain 24 to 48% movement speed depending on the champion level. Ghost extends its duration on takedown. So let's go ahead and break this up. So when you activate Ghost, you can move through units. It prevents unit collision. Have you ever had a time where you were trying to CS or trying to fight and you got minion blocked? Or maybe you were trying to do something and a champ was in your way and you couldn't get past it. This prevents that. So you're able to move through uh, minions, champions, scuttle crabs, whatever. You can't move through walls, but you can move through active units on the map. The second part of this says Ghost extends its duration on takedown. Any kills or assists is considered a takedown. So the most effective way to use a summoner spell would be to ensure that you can get more kills to then extend the duration of ghosts. Another way you can use it is to run away. Obviously, that's a pretty simple one. And another way you can use it is to catch up to someone. You have to close that gap so you can ghost. But a lot of the times you do want to spend your time ghosting when you feel like you can get a reset on someone to continue the movement speed. The roles that typically take ghosts are going to be top and jungle. Other roles can take ghosts, but it's very situational, I would definitely recommend that you only take it if you're top or if you're jungle. Ghost is really just used on juggernauts most of the time that need to be able to close that gap and prevent being kited. The next summoner spell we have is Heal. Restores 80 to 318 health depending on champion level and grants 30% move speed for one second to you and an allied, a target allied champion. This heal is halved for units recently affected by summoner's heal. When you heal, it heals you. That's pretty self-explanatory. It says heal, so you're healing yourself. Also, you get a 30% movement speed buff, which is huge. It's very, very nice. The third part of this is it affects another champion near you. Now, you have two ways to use this heal, okay? The way that it works is you put your mouse over a champ and you heal. And if they're in your little heal zone, you'll heal them. Also, it will heal the lowest champion in that zone. So, let's say your mouse isn't on someone, but you do heal, you'll heal the lowest target. So, if I were to be low, right, and someone behind me was low, and the person in front of me was getting low, but they weren't lower than the person behind me. The person behind me has 30% HP, the person in front of me has 50. If I don't hover my mouse over that person to heal them specifically, the heal will target the lowest champion, which would be the person behind me. And that's how come sometimes you press heal and it doesn't go off on certain champions. You have to make sure you put your mouse over them or you have to make sure that they're the lowest champion in that vicinity of your heal. And then one final note, when you heal, you get a brief debuff on you. That means if another champion were to heal you, the heal effect would be lower. It wouldn't be the same, it'd be halved. That doesn't usually happen because usually there's only one heal per game. The roles that typically take heal are going to be the ADC, or if the ADC decides not to take heal, the support will take heal for them. The most effective way to use heal would be to either, again, use it for the movement speed, use it for the heals. You can even use it to bait. So let's say I have 100 HP, right? I have 100 HP, they know I have 100 HP, and they're gonna try to dive me. If I heal as they dive, I then have more HP, which means I can turn the fight. So you can use it as a bait as well. One side note is that if you are ignited, your healing will be reduced. Ignite reduces healing. So if you were to heal while being ignited, it is lower. So remember, if you can, try to let the ignite wear off, whether it be you or someone else you're trying to heal, so that way you get the full effectiveness of the heal. The third thing that we have is barrier. Shield your champion from 105 to 411 damage depending on champion level for two seconds. So pretty much this just shields you from all incoming damage. Physical, magic, true damage, whatever, it will shield everything for the amount that the shield has had. The best way to use this ability is going to be the same way in terms of baiting like heal would be. You would use it to prevent damage done to you. So you can either bait it when you know they're about to all in, or maybe you shield yourself from an ignite tick. Whatever you do, you're trying to prevent damage from coming on to you. As I just said, the best way to use it 
would be to prevent burst. So if there's a LeBlanc getting ready to jump on you, if you have barrier, you prevent that burst. The roles that usually take barrier are gonna be mid lane. You don't usually see barrier anywhere else. Now support does have some occasions like Soraka, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you don't do that and you only take barrier mid. The fourth summoner spell is exhaust, but before we get into that, if you really feel like you deserve a higher rank, if you really feel like you're not having much impact in your games, if you really just feel like you're lost and you have no clue what to do and you're just in a rut of playing game after game after game and not having any successful gains, I highly recommend that you go to coachblaker.com. Book yourself a session and start making progress. If you've never been coached by me, I have a free option on my site for a free coaching. There's no excuse. If you really do want to get better and you really do want to improve, it's right there for you. And then if you guys are interested in my bootcamp, Patreon link down below. Bootcamp will start next month, so make sure you guys sign up before you can't sign up anymore. Exhaust target enemy champion, reducing their movement speed by 30% and their damage dealt by 35% for three seconds. You'll have to target the enemy champion and it's gonna slow them for 30%. It will also reduce their damage by 35%. The best way to use exhaust is to either slow down a target or to reduce its damage, its burst potential. So the same thing with barrier, you're preventing damage, you would just exhaust them and so they won't do any damage. You really wanna to try to exhaust them during their combo. If it's a Zed, you exhaust after he ults. If it's an Akali, you wait for her to go in. If it's a LeBlanc, again, wait for it to go. Like you're trying to exhaust champions as they're getting ready to do their entire combo so that way it's nullified. Roles that typically take exhaust are going to be mid lane, ADC, and support. Those are the roles that usually take exhaust. Next we have Clarity and Mark, but these are Howling Abyss summoner spells. Clarity gives you mana, Mark marks a target and you can fly to them. I'm not gonna go over too much in detail because I wanna focus more on Summoner's Rift. Next we have Flash. Teleport your champion a short distance toward cursor's location. Flash is pretty self-explanatory and I think everybody really understands how to use Flash. There's little niche ways to use Flash like closing bigger distances or like flashing with your ability. There's a lot of creative ways to use Flash and I do have a video on that in my beginner's guide. I can actually link that to you in the description below and it goes over how to use Flash properly, okay? Next we have Teleport. After channeling for four seconds, teleport your champion to an allied structure upgrades to unleash teleport at 14 minutes which teleports your champion to target allied structure minion or ward so let me break this down before 14 minutes you have a teleport that you can only teleport to towers to once 14 minutes hits your teleport upgrades and you can teleport to structures minions so things like uh, the little minions in lane or like malzahar's minion rift herald whatever you can teleport to that stuff and then you can also teleport to wards okay now, when we're talking about structures, we also talk about Thresh's Lantern, Jarvan's Flag. Um, I'm trying to think of other champs that have structures for you, but things that champions tend to leave on the ground, you should be able to teleport to. So keep that in mind as well. You can get some really, really creative teleport plays if you keep that in mind as you're playing. Heimerdinger Tourist is another one you can teleport to. Keep that in mind, keep that in mind. The best ways to use teleport is usually if you want to flank for a team fight, if you want to split push and then teleport to the team fight. So again, you're just flanking the team fight. Um, another way is you can TP to a minion to continue the split push. Maybe minions are shoving top side and you wanna hurry up and get there and start pushing down that tower. But for the most part, teleport is best used to just get you from point A to point B. If it's early game, you can use it to get back to your lane. Mid to late game, you can use it to affect team fights or get somewhere else. Next we have cleanse. Removes all disables, excluding suppression and airborne and summoner spell debuffs affecting your champion and lowers the duration of incoming disables by 65% for three seconds. So let's break this down. Removes all disables. So disables are anything that keeps your champion from moving or keeps your champion slowed in some aspect. So stuns, roots, snares, um, slows. Like it's gonna break off anything affecting your champion and causing it to move in a weird way. That's kind of like the best way to think about it. It doesn't cleanse suppression. So like Warwick, when he when he ults you, it doesn't cleanse that. Malzahar, when he ults you, it doesn't cleanse that. And it won't cleanse you being airborne. So if you get knocked up by Malphite, it's not gonna cleanse it, you're still gonna stay in the air. And the second thing that it cleanses is summoner spell debuffs. So when we're talking about exhaust, it cleanses that. When you talk about ignite, it cleanses that. So make sure that you think about that when you have cleanse, I can cleanse at night, I can cleanse exhaust, and I can go ahead and make more plays around that. The last thing here is it lowers the duration of incoming disables by 65%. So basically it's giving you free tenacity. 
guys don't know, tenacity reduces the amount of time that you're going to be stunned, snared, slow, whatever. So you're having that for, for, for three seconds, 65% reduction of that for three seconds. That's insane. So I'm not going to talk about really how to use cleanse. I'm going to talk about why you would take cleanse. You would take cleanse in situations where you really can't avoid the CC. So Fiddlesticks ultimate, uh, Ash ultimate, um, Leona's ultimate. Leon is a little bit a little, a little sketchy, but Thresh is a good one. If he hooks and you cleanse, he can't pull himself to you. Um, or you can let him pull yourself to you, and then you just like cleanse yourself as he's flying midair. He can't stop it, and you just walk away, and he'll, he'll drag him with you. The roles that usually take cleanse are going to be 80 carries. You don't usually take cleanse anywhere else because getting CC for you doesn't really matter too much. But for the most part, when you're in ADC, and if you get CC'd by an unavoidable CC, so again, champions that either have targeted spells or like just just CCs you can't dodge no matter what, you would take cleanse so that way you don't get punished. Next we have Ignite. Ignite's targets champion dealing 70 to 410 true damage depending on the champion level over five seconds. Grants you vision of the target and reduces healing effects on them for the duration. So let's break this down. Pretty much how it works is you do true damage to a target. You grant vision if they decide to walk in a bush while they're ignited, you're able to see them still and it reduces the healing effects on the champion. So it could be heals from outside sources like Soraka. It can be heals from items like Bloodthirster or Blade of the Ruin King. It could also be heals from the champion itself like Warwick, like these type of things, even runes like uh, Conquer, Ignite prevents that. So if you're against a champion that has really, really good heals, if you ignite them as they're fighting you, they're not gonna be able to heal as much and it's very, very impactful. A lot of the times players tend to try to ignite when they're low. The best way to effectively use ignite is to reduce the healing of the champion. Yes, you can use ignite to, when they're low to secure kills early game, but when it comes mid to late game, you're not looking to do the same thing. You're looking to reduce the heals on that said champion. The roles that typically take ignite are gonna be top, mid, and support. And last but not least, we have Smite. Deals 450 true damage to target epic, large, or medium monsters or minions. Against monsters, additionally restores 90 plus 10% maximum health. Health holds two charges, 90 seconds recharge time. So let's break this down. You do true damage of 450. Now, when you buy that Ember Knife, it does upgrade to 900 damage. But the initial spell itself does 450 true damage. You're able to smite anything that's a minion or a monster. So Malzahar, little scuttlings, you can smite. Uh, Heimerdinger turrets, you can smite. Minions, you can smite. Jungle monsters, you can smite. Objectives, you can smite. You know this already. Um, there's other champions, too, that put down things that you can smite. So remember, you can really smite a lot of the things on the map if they are things that can attack you or move. Like that's the best way I can kind of explain it. Of course, once you upgrade your smite with red or blue, you can then smite champions, but we're not gonna talk about that because that's an item. The best way to use smite would be to do just what I said. If you're like ganking a hybridinger, smite the turret. Um, if you're fighting something that has minions, smite the minions. You can smite the Shaco boxes, that's another one. So smite these little structures. Now I'm not gonna talk about blue and red smite, but I will talk about when to use them. So when to use blue smite is really when you're trying to get away or when you're trying to catch up, or you can even use it to secure kills. When you use red smite, you're using it to reduce damage done to you, as well as do true damage on your basic attacks. So I hope this helped you guys. Again, this is just my goal to help you get a better understanding of the summoner spells and then also give you a better understanding of how to use them in your game to give you that edge and that advantage. No matter the elo, I've always seen mistakes of people using their summoner spells incorrectly when they could have really had that little edge to secure kills or to secure team fight wins. So again, I hope this helped. If you guys are interested in coaching, remember coachbucket.com is where you want to go. I do offer a free session on my site for those of you that have never been coached. Just make sure you uh, check that out. And then as far as supporting the channel or wanting to be part of my boot camp that's starting next month, patreon.com is where you want to go. Coaching, coachbooker.com, supporting the channel or boot camp, patreon.com. Thank you guys for doing what? Approaching this like a coach.